Hey guys, uh, another Tech Nitwit production videos and we are going to talk about reinstalling Windows 10 on the HP series desktop computers. This is uh, the HP 690-0073W. Um, this will work for any HP desktop or laptop. So you have two ways that you are going to be able to actually reinstall Windows. One is with the DVD CD-ROM and that is going to be calling HP or going on their website if you have access with a computer and actually requesting a recovery slash install disk. Second way is with this beautiful, wonderful USB stick. I love these things, they're so great. And you're gonna go to the website that I got down in my description, which is gonna be this Microsoft uh, USB installer. That's all you gotta type in Google, or if you wanna be quick and easy about it, go down below and click on the link. So I'm gonna show you guys here really quick. To, um, you guys are gonna wanna come down here really quick and you're gonna wanna download now. And that's where you're going to want to go on the website. Let me kind of point this out for you, and I'll put a little arrow down here. One thing you want to check is to make sure you're actually on the Microsoft website. So you're going to want to make sure there's a lock up here and uh, all that fun jazz. Go ahead and hit download now. I already have this downloaded. No, I don't have it downloaded. Sorry. I do not have it downloaded. It's going to take a couple seconds. This is going to be the media creator that allows Windows to install itself onto the USB. So you're not installing Windows just yet. So if you have anything you need to back up, you have any files that you're worried about, you might want to buy another one of these guys like a 64 or 128 or get a one terabyte you know, external disk, plug it in and download all that stuff. Now a couple fun facts. Now if you have software issues or malware problems or viruses, you don't want to back those files up. It sounds counterintuitive, but you should try to be safer with your computers and not let stuff like that happen. Uh, a couple cool facts that I learned in computer engineering school. 90% uh, of all computer issues are user related and out of those 90%, 85% are software related. So if that helps you, you know, understand what the problem is or what's going on, it's right between here. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to be mean. So, okay guys, I got the USB installer or this is the ISO, it can create both. Um, if you would prefer to not use this media creator, you can download Roughest Disk and get the ISO and then you know, you don't use their installer. It's why you would do that. Um, there are certain certain circumstances that you would need that, but this video is out of that purview. So one thing I do want to mention is to make this installer, you can plug this into the front of the computer, but you cannot boot off of it into the front of the HP computers. It is like that on some of the HP laptops as well. So if you're having problems getting this media to boot, switch USB sticks or switch USB sticks, switch USB ports. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the back of the, the HP. So you guys see, this is going in the back. I'm sorry, I don't have above you. It's just a quick and dirty and easy video. And that's it right there, right in the back. So um, another thing, if you don't know your model number and you're wondering and you get Windows all installed, you can come here and you can actually grab your model number all the way to the dash 0073W like mine is and go into the HP site and get all your drivers and stuff because Windows does not always install that stuff so you might have to manually do that. I will show you at the end of the video how to do that on the web page. I will also have a link in the description down below. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and hit accept. It's going to take its sweet darn time doing absolutely nothing. No, I'm kidding. It's, it's checking your specifications of your computer out. It's checking the MAC addresses. It's checking your CD key out. It's doing a bunch of crap in the background that it actually does need to do. All right, guys, so you're not going to want to do upgrade this PC now. You're going to want to create installation media for USB flash drive, DVD, or ISO file for another computer. Go ahead and hit next. Now, this is going to do, this is a language selector and architect selector. You're going to want to use the recommended options for this PC. Unless you know that this needs to be different, don't change this and hit next. So right here it's saying USB flash drive or the ISO when I was talking about roughest disk, which I will have a link for down here below if you want to do the ISO version. Otherwise, you're going to select the USB flash drive. Let's go ahead and hit next. And right here I'm seeing a re my removable drive. It's the only one plugged into the system. If you have multiple drives plugged into the system, they might show up here. Don't ask me why, but they do. So just be aware that if you're trying not to overwrite something on another disk to to verify that 
you know, F is your USB that is in there. You can do that by coming over here and opening this computer up and come in here and hit properties, right click and hit properties and see, okay, it's a, it's a 16 gig uh, USB stick. It shows about 14 gigs. That's correct. I already have U, uh, Windows on this drive, so I'm not going to go ahead and write to it, but you pretty much hit next right here as this is selected. It's going to take some time. It's going to do its thing, go around and around and around. It's going to load all the files and stuff to the actual USB disk. I will just uh, show you guys for demonstration purposes. I'm going to hit next, but I'm going to pull the USB stick and it just goes to there. And once it's done, you're pretty much at the point to where this is now installed, everything's created and you're going to boot off of it. Now remember, you can put this in the front to make the disk, but you cannot boot off of it in the front. So I'm going to come back in here, and it's saying it's actually getting progress, but I don't know how it's getting progress because I've got it right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and restart the computer. This is not what you should do. You should let this progress continue, get to 100%, and then go and you know do your uh, install. So after this is done, you're just going to hit next. It's going to complete, and then the window's done. So you're going to come down here, and you're actually going to restart the computer. Now, let me say one thing. If you don't have access to this computer, call a friend, a buddy, a girlfriend, a cousin, and use their computer and go over there with your USB stick and create the, the actual media. That's if you can't access a computer. So that's just a, some suggestions if your computer is totally mowed. Meowed. So if it's a hardware issue, this will not fix a hardware issue, but this will fix 90% of the stupid out there. All right, guys. Ooh, I shouldn't have plugged that back in before I restarted. Hopefully, it just didn't format it. Well, we'll see here if it boots off correctly. So I'm going to go down here, guys, and I'm just going to force the restart because otherwise we'll, we'll be here all night watching this thing do its thing. So before this goes to a black screen, I am going to plug this into the back, get this plugged in, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit F9, which should pull up the HP boot menu, and it did. And we can see UEFI Kingston Data Traveler 3.0 MMAP, and then you got OS Boot Manager, Windows Boot Manager, and Legacy Boot Support. So you're going to want to select your USB, which mine's a Kingston, but if yours is a different brand, it might be Samsung, ScanDisk, PNY, Mushkin, whatever brand you prefer as a you know, US, USB uh, disk. Go ahead and boot off the UEFI, and it should take a little bit, and then the Windows stuff will load. All right, guys, first thing you're going to get is a language to install, time and currency format. All this stuff's going to either be on English or US, so you're just going to hit the next button. Going to go ahead and we're not going to repair. We are going to do install now. It is going to take about anywhere between 5 and 30 seconds right here to kind of get started and get its stuff loaded up. Now, I will say this. If you can use one of the USB 3.0s on the back, it, the install should go faster. If you have an older HP and it has, you know, the 2.0 and 3.0, if, if it will let you boot off of it, use the 3.0s. But some of the HPs have problems with booting off at the 3.0s for some reason, so just be aware, you know, that might be a thing. <clears throat> so we're going to have to accept notices and licensing terms. We're going to go ahead and hit accept the licensing terms, hit next. Now right here, you don't want to do upgrade or install. If you do this top one, this is going to save all your files and stuff um, that you, you know, if you've got malware, viruses, or stupid, this is going to save it. And you don't want to save stupid or viruses or malware. So. I'm going to go ahead and do custom install, and that is going to pretty much bring up my two drives. I know I have two drives on this computer. I got a one terabyte uh, PNY for doing OBS type of stuff, and then I got my 512 uh, um, NVMe. So I'm going to come down here, and I know drive zero is my main one. You got the drive one of al uh, allocated space, so all these drive ones are the Windows partition. So I'm going to come here and do, well, not format. I'm going to do delete. And I'm just going to select everyone that says drive one. You don't want drive zero unless you want to erase that stuff. Now, if you got malware or a virus, you're definitely going to want to wipe your disks because um, that's going to be the best outcome. If you do a reinstall, you get your drivers back up, and say a week later, all of a sudden your computer starts doing slow again, it's either going to be one of two things. It's going to be the virus came back or you got a piece of hardware that's failing. 
So I'm just going to select through here really quick and delete all these. Now, I always like to make an extra space of unallocated uh, thing for the disk, and that is used for trim and space. SSDs want to have a little bit of unused space that is not partitioned or used for anything. They really, really like it. So if you can do it, do it. Usually what I do is if uh, the disk is like 5, 12, 4,000, I'll take that 4,000 and just be like 5, 12, 0, 0, 0, 0. Um, or, you know, I'll, I'll show you here in a second. I'll give you a pretty well visual example. So, all right, now we got drive one on an allocated space. Sorry, I thought it was a 512. It's not. It's, it's a 256. But it shows up as 238. So I'm going to go ahead and hit new. And like I said, I'm going to take these last four, and I'm just going to type zero. So one, two, three, four. Hit apply. And this is automatically going to create all the master brute partitions. It's going to create the, the system partition. It's going to create the unallocated space. Now, you want to install Windows on the big version. So the largest portion out of this, which is going to be the partition three usually. So go ahead and hit next. And guys, I'm going to speed this up because this is going to take about anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes, depending on how fast your system is, what type of disks you're using, if you're using USB 2.0 uh, USB stick, or if you're writing to a spindle disk versus an SSD. Alright guys, if, if you have an SSD with the USB 3.0, it'll literally be this fast, which is like two, three minutes is what it just took. Um, it's going to be restarting here all, all on its own. Now go ahead, as soon as it restarts, get ready to pull the USB from the back. Otherwise, it's going to want to reboot to that USB. So go ahead and drop that USB and the computer is going to do its wonderful, wonderful magic. Um, the one thing I will say, guys, is I'm probably not going to do the walkthrough with you guys. I do have that in some of my unboxing videos if you're really wondering on how to do that. Um, if you would like just a video of that by itself, throw it down in the comments below, and I will get on top of that for you. I am going to show you the getting... I'm not going to show you guys the getting ready, but I will show you the driver's page like I promised. So give me a couple seconds, and let me get this stuff done, and then I will show you guys the, you know... There's two things you can do. You can go to the spec page and download the drivers that way, or you can go to the HP driver download for your PC. So I'm going to show you once I get this all nice and programmed, and we'll be right back with you. All right, guys, this is TechNet. We just got Windows installed, and it's looking wonderful. So I got the, the HP support page up here. I'm going to walk you through how to download some of the HP drivers. I'm also going to walk you through... Um, about knowing what type of graphics card drivers. If you have an NVIDIA, you want to download NVIDIA drivers. If you download, if you got Radeon, you're going to want to download Radeon drivers. Now, I'm going to say Windows does a really good job of downloading the drivers automatically to where you don't have to really do anything. So what I would say is unless something isn't working correctly or not working at all after you do this, I would say don't even touch this website. Um, but if you have like your Bluetooth's not working or your Wi-Fi's not working or say you're not your fast charging or something's not working. Now this should fix it, but it might not. So just, you know, I'm not a, a, a tech wizard. I, I can't tell you, you know, the future. I wish I could, but sometimes it's not. So I'm going to show you how to get the 690-0073W. And I'm going to come over here and hit desktop. And then I'm actually going to type in 690-0073W. And then that model will come up. Is it the 73W? I don't know what model my computer is. Let me look at the bottom. As I drop it on the ground. Yeah, 690-0073W. So it is showing an, uh, the, the 690 um, let's get rid of the W, see if it likes that better. Or let's just do 690. We got A. Yeah, it's, uh, 
being difficult. So we're on desktop. Let's see if uh, it'll detect our product properly. Yeah, I know. It's probably going to have you download uh, something. Yep. Go ahead and hit run. I don't know why it wasn't detecting the 690-0073W. Okay. I mean, this is mainly so we can get the correct drivers. Um, this has a 1660 Ti in it, so I, I'm going to be going and downloading the NVIDIA uh, drivers. Um, that would be the only thing I would say to go and do because that performance difference between what Windows puts on your machine and what NVIDIA gives you is going to be second to none. Um, the drivers you get from NVIDIA are always going to be first place. I'll say this one more time with the laptop and desktops and stuff like that. If the first time after you get the install done to the USB, if for some reason it sits there at a black screen or the computer doesn't want to boot, go ahead and pull that out of that port and switch the USB port. Other than that, guys, uh, it's, I'm just going to show you how to do this quick, and then that'll be the end of the video. All right, guys, once you guys get the, the HP detected, you'll have all this stuff pop out. Um, I'm sorry the 690-0073W in the, the menu that I was putting in would not come up. I will have a link for the 773W for you guys, so if you want to try to go to it, but I guarantee you HP is not going to let me link to this, so you're going to have to download that program and download it. I would put the serial number in there because that's what they were wanting. If you actually flip over to the bottom and sticker, the serial number is there and you could type it in. Um, but other than that, guys, here's pretty much your basic stuff. They do have BIOS updates. There's really not a lot in the BIOS updates, but it is there. So guys, this was Tech Nitwit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this helps somebody out. If it did help you out, please throw a like and a comment down below. It helps me out a great deal. Other than that, if you uh, have something negative or positive to say, throw a comment down below. This is Tech Nitwit, and I'm out. And you know what? Uh, you, can, you can cut. Hey guys, it's Tech Nitwood here. Make sure you guys subscribe and like and hit that bell. Thanks.